we are going to start. Whoa, whoa. We're going to start in fish, in yin fish. So you bring the bottoms of your feet together. You can imagine your feet are happy and clapping together. And then you come back onto, your, you have about two hands length between your groin and your heels. And you're going to come back onto your forearms. And if it's okay for your neck, just lift up your chin and drop your head back. We split the time, half of the time up with our neck hanging back here, and then we're gonna slide to the ground. So if you wanna get there before I do, that's fine. Hello. But just take a nice big inhale and with your exhale, just sigh it out. Oh. And just to allow these first couple of moments to help you literally get here, but metaphorically get here as well. So now all of us have our body on the yoga mat. We just wanna kind of rein your attention and notice the smell in the house, the temperature of the smell, it's not a bad thing. Um, the light in the home, the sounds around you, Notice the floor underneath you. And then just start to make some kind of just inquiries into what else did you bring and what else do you wanna have with you in your yoga practice today? With this idea, it can be good, it can be bad, it can be you know happy or sad, but that we really include all of us in our practice. So rather than trying to push out things, we're just gonna invite them in onto our mat, open for transformation. Allow your upper body to come down to the ground by sliding your elbows out to the side. And you're gonna bring your thumbs together and your index fingers together. And you're gonna spread out your other fingers and then slide your hands right to, so that your thumbs meet where your head and the ground meet. You don't have to lift up your head. So it's a little bit like you're, you're wearing a tiara. We've got some antlers. So the thumb, the thumbs touching, the index fingers touching, and then the middle finger, ring finger, and little fingers stretching out. And I'm gonna start this morning, well, we started already, but we are gonna, um, I'm gonna read a poem from John O'Donohue, one that my friend shared the other day. And it, it moved me, so I'm gonna read it to you. Blessed be the longing that brought you here and quickens your soul with wonder. May you have the courage to listen to the voice of desire that disturbs you when you have settled for something safe. May you have the wisdom to enter generously into your own unease, to discover the new direction your longing wants you to take. May the forms of your belonging in love, creativity, and friendship be equal to the grandeur and the call of your soul. May the one you long for long for you. May your dreams gradually reveal the destination of your desire. May a secret providence guide your thought and nurture your feeling. May your mind inhabit life with the sureness with which your body inhabits the world. May your heart never be haunted by ghost structures of old damage. May you come to accept, accept your longing 
as divine urgency. And may you know the urgency with which God longs for you. Now you are going to release your hands and hug your knees in and just rock your hips side to side. So you're massaging your lower back and then rock backwards and forwards. And you're going to rock up into a seated position and we're going to go into saddle pose, which is again, going back, but in a different way with our legs in a totally different position. And if it's not available to you, you're always welcome to do Sphinx, but I have a feeling that we can all do saddle pose. So either sit on your heels or in between your heels. If you have some other interesting flexibility, some people can just have their feet going out to the side. And then if your butt's on the ground, come back to your elbows. If that's okay for you, you might even be able to come all the way down to the ground. And sometimes it takes a couple breaths to get there. And now bring your hands to your belly, the center of your body, so to say. There's so many nerve endings here. It's also, you know, so we get a lot of the, our feelings actually are quite connected to our belly area, but also our power. So you can have your belly or kind of like a little bit in to the sides. So it comes into the crease of your hips, if you like. Maybe you feel your ovaries, if you got that kind of thing. But this poem, I, I really, I just like it so much because it awakens us to this idea that there's guidance in knowing yourself, there's guidance in the self-realization that when we actually have the courage to unveil what we really, really are longing for, it can help move us in the direction that we maybe even said that we wanted to go before we were born. It's very popular these days to just, you know, you've gone to a lot of yoga classes and you hear like, oh, just do what feels good. And for me, that's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Maybe because I do have like a shadow side that easily could pursue a hedonistic life, a life that's only about pursuing pleasure. But ultimately, you know that just the pleasure of the body or the pleasure of a moment isn't enough to awaken your soul or help you become more yourself. it ends up often being nearly the opposite, where it's as if we can lose ourselves in desire instead of letting a more quiet but consistent longing and draw and desire lead us to our practice of becoming and ultimately our destiny. So you're going to take your hands and you're going to bring your hands to your face. And just with your fingertips, we're going to give ourselves a lymphatic stimulation. So you're just tapping your face with your fingers lightly. And if you want to just stretch your legs out and just lie on your back and do that, that's fine. I was just thinking of a position where your hands are free to tap your face and you get into like the fleshy part of your cheeks, feel the bones, feel your jawline, maybe a little bit down on your neck. And this light tapping actually kind of awakens your circulation and helps 
your face be more lively? And then you can relax your hands. And even though we're lying down, we can do our three morning wows. Um, so you just have the, you know, no one's seeing your face right now. So you just delight in letting your whole face move with three wows. You go, wow, 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 wow. And now you're going to either come back up one elbow at a time or roll onto your side and come back up. And we're gonna transition to a child's pose before we get our fire started. So allow yourself to come, you know, comfortably wide with your knees, stretching your arms out in front of you and take a couple moments and just notice where what it was lifted up in you when I talk about longing or desire. And yeah, just notice for a few moments first. And we're just, just over the 10 minute mark into our class. And this is often where we still have kind of the resistance to our practice. So you might even hear this quiet desire of like, kind of just want to go lie down or I kind of want to blow this off or, but notice that there's something more than that. Something calling you towards more than just momentary pleasure or kind of sleepy comfort. And then with your inhale, roll up. And we are gonna start the warming up with our voice and three ohms. So bring your hands to heart center. And just for, you know, ultimate warmth, let's make a Anahata Mudra. So you keep your thumbs and to your pinkies like glued together and the rest of your fingers are stretching out. So it's nearly like it's an eight petaled flower. Your thumbs connect to your breastbone. So there's effort in your fingers, but your elbows are heavy. Let your heart lift into it, up to it. Close your eyes, empty your breath, and let's take a nice inhale to fuel our three ohms. Ah. And then let your eyes open up and your hands relax down and plant your hands onto the yoga mat and move your knees back coming into tabletop. And then we're gonna magically turn our table into a cow. <laughs> Inhale, lift up your head, your heart and your hips. And then magic to cat, pull your belly up. Transformative yoga, yeah? Inhale, lift up to cow. Maybe feel your shoulders drop a little bit further down. Feel your sit bones separating. Exhale, push into cat. You can already feel that you could push your toes down and float your knees if you want. Lightly bring your knees back down. Slide into cow. Exhale into cat. And then come to a neutral spine. So you're engaging your abdominals. You're active, not totally passive here, but your back is nice and straight. 
stretch your right leg back and pulse a couple of times with your right heel to release your right calf. Not a small cow, just your leg. Oh no, the calves are getting away. And then you're gonna bring your right heel down to the ground and you're gonna open up for a supported side plank here. And then you're gonna reach your right arm over your ear and lift up your right leg and stretch long here. Take a full inhale, exhale, pulling your belly in. Inhale, getting longer. And then with your next exhale, you're gonna reach back with your right hand, hold on to your ankle and maybe look up to the sky, kicking your foot lightly into your hand. And then with not too much drama, release it, bring your right hand down, but let your right leg be floating. And with your exhale, you're gonna bring your right knee up towards your shoulder. So it's a little bit like hydrant asana, <laughs> like you're going over a hydrant here and then stretch your leg long, squaring your hip. Inhale, stretch your left arm to balance out the stretch of your right arm back along the line of your spine. And now we're gonna do the same thing with our knee, but we're gonna mimic it with our elbow. So awkward bat. Mm -hmm. Inhale, go fully extended, pulling your left hand away from your right toes. Exhale, bend your knee, bend your elbow. One more time, stretch long, starting to get a little bit challenging. With your exhale, bend your knee and your elbow. Now this time, tap your elbow and knee together underneath your belly, pull your belly up here. Then exhale, spread your wings. Take an inhale here, then exhale, tap in. So you have a little bit of cat in your spine. One more time, open up. It nearly feels like, like you're parachuting or something and then tap your elbow and knee together and extend your left arm and your right leg. And then come back down to a wiggly tabletop or a sassy cow. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're nice Elon with the, the, the head swing in there. Very good. So maybe you actually really have this like weird hybrid of cat cow. Yes. And now, the same thing, other side. Go for it. No, just kidding. Tap back with your left heel. Already noticing that we're engaging our whole body, our abdominals, and lower abdominals that connect and lift up your left leg. Stretch your left leg long. And then with your exhale, you're going to bend your knee and pull your knee towards your ribs, it feels like. It's, it's, not, it's not a pose we do often, it feels awkward. And then stretch your leg long along the spinal line and balance it out by stretching your right arm forward. Notice squeezing your lips together doesn't really help much. So you might as well smile. With your exhale, bend your elbow and knee. Like it's like maybe flat bat. <laughs> no. Inhale, stretch long. And then exhale, pull your elbow and knee towards your ribs. One more time, stretch long, bend your elbow and knee. And this time you're gonna tap your elbow and knee under your body, pulling your belly up. Inhale, spread your bat wings. Exhale, tap them in. Inhale, spread them. Exhale, tap it in. And then stretch long. And then you're gonna put your right hand down and spin your left heel to the ground, coming into supported plank. Reach your left arm over your ear, bring the weight into your right leg and float your left leg. Uh huh. And then get long. And with your exhale, reach back and see if you can hold on to your ankle, look up to the ceiling and maybe you can kick your foot into your hand a little bit more. And then without going splat, stretch long with your left limbs. And with your exhale, bring your left knee and your left hand down. And again, undulate your table. 
See if you can add some rib rolls. Mm -hmm. And then tuck your toes under and just dance yourself to a downward facing bent nape dog. Magic all around. Allow your breath to become rhythmical. You're breathing your own jai breath. So you have a constriction in the back of your throat. It sounds like a sexy enlightened Darth Vader. Yep, throw your, throw your skins away. And then inhale, move forward into plank and keeping your feet just as wide as they are now, roll to the outside edge of your left foot and the inside edge of your right foot and stretch your right arm up to the sky. And then come back with your exhale to plank, take a full inhale, full exhale, and then roll to the other side. Ta-da! And then exhale, push back to downward facing dog. Inhale, roll over the top and come to plank. And exhale, bending your knees low, push back first to bear and then to downward facing dog. Two more times. It's like you're like a steam engine, I think of those trains, you know. <laughs> but whatever kind of piston motion you think of. One more time, I believe, if I did my counting right. And then find your way to downward facing dog. Take a full breath in and just sigh out some good feelings, good thoughts. Oh, I always want to say spaghetti. I don't know why that is. Okay, take another full inhale. Empty your breath all the way and then quietly hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, and let's lift up our arms and fly our halfway lift. Let's take a couple breaths here. So really explore it. Notice what your fingers are doing. Your palms are pushing flat. You're lifting your belly up. You're meeting your extended spine. Notice how your breath feels. And then with your next exhale, bend into your forward fold, hugging the back of your knees, bending your knees as much as you need to. Let's take a couple breaths here. Maybe you've been like hug deprived and you need to squeeze a little bit. And then release your hands down to the ground and allow your next inhale to roll you all the way up to standing and reach your hands up to the ceiling, looking up in between your hands. And with your exhale, samasti tihi. Maybe a hint of a smile. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, bow down. This time I like to keep my hands on the ground. Inhale, halfway lift. And then either jump to chataranga or step to plank and lower down chataranga. Elbows close to your ribs. Inhale, low cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So in your downward facing dog, you wanna have your feet hip distance apart. You wanna have your heels hiding behind your ankles. And while you're staring at your feet there, a couple other things to check is to see if your toes are starting to turn a brighter white than you are. It's showing you that you're not letting the circulation into your toes. So you can just lift up your toes, spread them out and relax them down. And then find a little like, you wanna actually lift up the skin of your legs so much so that you don't even have any wrinkles in your ankles. Take another full inhale, fuel up, empty your breath all the way, look forward and quietly hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, fly your halfway lift. I just like the freedom and power you can feel here. Exhale, hug the back of your knees, bending your knees if you need to. Then root down and roll up, stretch up tall, reach up high. And with a hint of a smile, take your hands to heart center, samasti tihi. Relax your hands down. And again, inhale, stretch your arms up. Do you want me to move the tree? Exhale, bow down. <laughs> inhale, halfway lift. Feel your abdominals happy and engaged. 
and then jump to chaturanga. So you bend your elbows as you're jumping back. Inhale, upward facing dog, point your toes, spread out your fingers, lift up your heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now that we've paid attention to our feet a little bit, make your adjustments. Your gaze is either landing between your feet or you can do the Ashtanga Dristi of bringing your gaze to your belly button. Now everybody bend your elbows and float your elbows over the yoga mat and then squeeze the bony part of your elbows together. Do you feel that your shoulders opening up and getting broader? Now you wanna keep your, the inside of your upper arms rotating out to the sides as you straighten your arms so that you have a lot of space in your trapezius muscles. And if you're ever bored or you need a little extra in your yoga practice, you're always welcome to practice turbo dog where your elbows are bent and your knees are bent. It's a, it's a muscle builder. Keep your hips coming up into the air pair. Yes, there you go. Take another full inhale, fuel up. Empty your breath all the way, not being scared to have nothing, and then jump forward. Inhale, fly your halfway lift. Oh, yeah. Exhale, hug the back of your knees. And then it's a nice sweeping motion as you inhale to, ooh, katasana. So let's find our weight in our heels. And you can lift up a little bit. That's like your polite ukutasana. And then you have your thunderbolt ukutasana. So you come a little bit deeper, kind of not playing it safe. We want to be able to increase our capacity to live, not just reiterate making safe choices. Yeah. Safe is illusion. It's kind of like security. Find the weight in your heels. Noticing that the more you know yourself, the more you actually have sanctuary in yourself. And then security and safety, they become less important. Take another full inhale as your heart lifts up and then exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift and then jump or to chaturanga or step to plank and lower down chaturanga. Chin away from your chest and then inhale, upward facing dog. Feel that your fingers spreading out helps you lift your chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. And with your exhale, bend your knee and let your hips spin open. Now, just to be, again, nitpicky about this pose, I'm going to help you by guiding you to bring your left hand just to the fingertips. Do you notice what that made you do? You redistributed your weight so that you had a little bit more weight in your right hand and your right hand's nice and your right shoulder squared. Now, if you can, maybe even float your left hand. Notice if maybe you could just squeeze your foot or slap the bottom of your foot, or maybe you could just reach your hand up towards your hip. And notice you might've like, everything else might've been lost, but you did what I said. <laughs> just notice. Gorgeous, great, Lani. I'm, I'm, yeah, harping on you today. Bring your left hand down, everybody. Take another fueling inhale, and with your exhale, tap your right elbow with your left. Sorry, your left elbow with your right knee. Inhale, stretch your right leg long. Exhale, tap your right shoulder with your right knee. It's really high up there. It's hard. Inhale, it's a little higher. Inhale, stretch your leg long. And then with your exhale, either go for your shoulder or your elbow or somewhere in between. And then inhale, stretch your right leg long. Exhale, relax your right leg down. Inhale, glide forward into plank. Exhale, chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra, but knees off the ground. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. Now to give your right wrist a little bit of a break, you can bring your, bend your left knee, spin your hip open and then tent 
your fingers on your right hand, letting the weight become less on the right hand. Maybe feel how your shoulders squared, but your hips can still be twisting open. And then play with it. Can you lift your right hand up? Can you touch the bottom of your foot without losing everything? <laughs> it's a good question. It's, it's a balance. It's like, as soon as you think you have it, it's like, oops, there it goes. Gorgeous. And then bring your right hand back. Take another fueling inhale. With your exhale, bring your left knee to your right elbow. Just tap it. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Exhale, try to tap your shoulder. Even the effort might not get you there, but it'll be challenging. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Now yogi's choice, elbow or shoulder or somewhere in between. Tap it. Inhale, stretch long. And with your exhale, relax your left leg down. Now you can invite a small bend into your knees to help you find more ease and balance in your downward facing dog. And then take another fueling inhale and just sigh out your exhale. <sighs> so notice that when you sigh out through your mouth, you're signaling your body and your body goes, oh, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Take another full inhale, empty your breath all the way, and then quietly float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, fly your halfway lift. It should feel liberating. Exhale, release and bow forward, hugging the back of the knees if you want. And then with your toes and heels touching, swing your arms up. Ooh, katasana. And exhale, samasti tihi, stand up. This might be a good time to remind yourself to smile. Inhale, ooh, katasana. Shift the weight back to your heels so you can actually lift up your toes and wiggle your toes without moving your nose or your fingers. Yes. Take another full inhale as your hips drop a little bit, your chest lifts up. And then exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. Jump to Chataranga. So your jump and your elbows are bending. This is much safer for your joints. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. And with your exhale, tap your right knee to your left elbow. Inhale, stretch your right leg long. And with your exhale, bring your knee to your nose and then step your right foot to your right thumb. Let your left heel be lifted and rise up, crescent lunge. And let's take a couple breaths here. So feel that you're pushing back with your left heel into nothing, but it helps you. Your arms are reaching, your fingers wanna get away from the knuckles. Now everybody go lower, Uh huh. a little bit more. So we, we, can, we can really do our whole practice. So we're just kind of like visiting it or we can drop into where our edges. This is where we become new every practice. Take another full inhale, maybe lifting up your gaze. And with your exhale, ride your breath to Chataranga. Go low in Chataranga, Sabine Love. Inhale up, yes, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your glorious left leg. With your exhale, tap your right elbow with your knee. Inhale, stretch your leg. With your exhale, bring your knee to your nose. So your abdominals are carrying your left leg. Deliver it to your left thumb. Back heel stays lifted. Rise up, crescent lunge. So you can feel, you can kind of go to this place where like, yeah, you can hang out all day. You could probably talk about shopping or like whatever, you know, like the, these superficial desires. Like this is the desire to be comfortable. Exactly, Alon. Now get a little challenged. Come into this edge where we don't know how everything's going to work out. Reach through your fingertips, maybe shift your gaze up as you enjoy a liberating inhale. Then ride your exhale all the way down. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. So you might start to notice that you often are presented with what at first seem like conflicting desires. Like I wanna get strong, but I don't like being weak, so I wanna avoid being weak. Hmm. Or I wanna feel comfortable now, but I actually in the long run want to be stronger or more flexible or more patient or more generous. And so that bigger, longer desire asks us to be willing to lean into um, or lean away from our desire for comfort and ease. Take another fueling inhale, empty your breath all the way and walk or float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, fly your halfway lift, feel the power in your upper body. Exhale, hug the back of your knees. Now bend your knees deeply and swing your arms up. Ooh, katasana. And now with your exhale, open arm twist to your right, reach through your fingertips, let your hips drop down while your heart stays where it is. Hmm. Then your next inhale, lift up to center, maybe lifting your heart, but dropping your butt. And with your exhale, open arm twist to your left, reach through your fingertips, feel that you create space. And then keeping your true ukatasana, come back to center with your inhale. And then exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. Now you're gonna bend your knees and bring your knees to the backs of your arms. Maybe lift up one foot, maybe lift up both. Take a full inhale and then fake it to your make it. Exhale, chaturanga or step. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, tap your right elbow with your right knee. Inhale, stretch your right leg long. Exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Rise up, crescent lunge. Your brave, true crescent lunge. And with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Twist your upper body first. And then drop your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Now, this is a perfectly great place to be. But it's quite stable. So we're just going to play a little bit. You're going to start to shift your weight into your right bent knee. And then see if you can keep your right knee bent and actually float your left leg up. Keeping your hands praying. And then with your exhale, let your left foot come to the mat. Inhale up. Ukatasana. Exhale, open up. Warrior two. Now, this is a very active place to rest. Are you okay, Sabine? <laughs> you want to feel that you're reaching from your middle finger to your middle finger and that your thigh is so parallel to the yoga mat, I could put a, a tray of glasses on your thigh and you could just balance it there. Yes. Now, drop a little lower into your warrior too. Notice if you're playing it safe. And with your inhale, you're going to reverse your warrior and exhale, chaparanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. So our vinyasa becomes like a rinse. And then inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bend your left knee and tap your left elbow or higher. Inhale, stretch your leg long. Exhale, step your left foot forward, rise up, crescent lunge, being going right to a deep bend in your left thigh. And with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center, twist from your thoracic spine first, and then drop your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. So you're really pushing your hands together actively. And what this does is it actually lifts your chest up. Start to shift the weight into your left foot. Notice what your brain is doing. Notice what you tell yourself. 
You might be thinking wobbling is fine. That's how we find our balance. You know, all of my screw ups brought me here as long as along with my su successes. Keep your left leg bent and then lightly touch your right foot back to the yoga mat. Inhale, good catch. Crescent lunge. Exhale, open up. Warrior two. So this is a warrior pose. It's, it's not passive. It's super active. You're sliding your left knee over your left ankle. You're reaching your fingertips so aggressively away from your shoulders that the bottom part of your arms are even getting toned. You take your gaze over the middle finger on your left hand and you wanna have your butt underneath you for support. Like, wouldn't it be nice to be sitting on a cushion? Yes, beautiful. Now take a full inhale as you reverse your warrior and then enjoy your vinyasa. So sometimes you slow it down a bit. Sometimes you skip it. Sometimes you make it a little bit harder by adding a chaturanga before downward facing dog. It's your vinyasa. Exhale, let's meet up in downward facing dog. And walk your hands back to your feet. Separate your feet so they're hip distance apart. And this is for, especially if your wrists are annoying you, this is for you. Um, you're gonna slide your hands all the way underneath your feet. We're skipping right to the second part of it, yeah. So your toes are nestled into the crease of your wrists. Now inhale, bend your knees and lift up your head and come to like a halfway lift, even though your hands are being pinned underneath your feet and then come into the exhale forward bend. And then you wanna start to see how much you can roll your weight towards your fingers or to your toes. And if you want a challenge, you always can lift up your heels here. If you fall, you pretend like you're in fire and you just go with it and you drop and roll. Feel how your breath is maybe a little bit more active, a little bit more hard work, but this is part of how we increase the heat in our body to give us more space, more room, more flexibility, and more lovely sweat. Great, and then step off of your hands. Walk your hands back all the way forward to plank. Bring your feet together. And then roll to the outside edge of your right foot and stretch your left arm up to the sky. Classic traditional plank. So you want to have your, you want a straight line. So a lot of times we can, we can lift our hips too high. So let's do that all together. Lift your hips too high. And then with your exhale, let your hips drop down too low. Inhale, lift them too high. Exhale, drop them too low. Oh my gosh, this is like a side body push up. Yes. One more time, too high. And then you come to this place that the Swedes all know. It's called lagom. It's right between too much and too little. With your exhale, bring your left hand down. Optional chataranga to plank. Oh yeah. Being awesome is a pain in the butt. And then roll over to the outside edge. You wanna be on the outside edge of your left foot. Tuck your tail. So basically what's hard for you here or anywhere is gonna be hard for you here. So tucking your tail or your hips are too high. Lift your hips too high, everyone. We're gonna go for three. Exhale, drop your hips down too low. And then go too high. Too low. Too high. Like seven more, right? No, okay, I think it's just one more. Too low and then back to that Goldilocks special. Right, just exactly where you need them. And then exhale, chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Maybe you slow it a hair so you really enjoy it. Feel your heart opening up. And then exhale, downward facing dog. And you're gonna to start to invite a little bit of a bounce into your step, so to say. So just start to drop your heels and see if you can shake your body in such a way that you're not jumping up and down, disturbing your downstairs neighbors, but instead you're jiggling all the soft spots in your body. Mm -hmm. It's like you would to imagine like, you know, it's a good old fashioned vibrating bed. You've got a vibrating yoga mat. Desires, huh? They are varied and weird. <laughs> But like Rumi says, let yourself be silently drawn 
to the strange pull of what you really love, it will never lead you astray. So start to still your shaking. Take a full inhale, empty your breath all the way and float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, fly your glorious halfway lift. Exhale, hug your strong legs as you come into a forward bend. And then bend your knees, drop your booty. I love Ukatasana. Mm. Stretch it up. And with your exhale, open arm twist to your right. Now, inhale, you're going to lift your left arm up and reach your right arm back. Mm -hmm. And then inhale, Ukatasana. Exhale, take it over to the left. Now, inhale, lift your right arm up and drop your left arm back. And then inhale, Ukatasana. Exhale, bow down. Inhale, halfway lift. And then come again to crow pose. So bring your knees to the backs of your arms. Your knees are energetically squeezing in. You're lifting up your feet towards your groin. Your gaze is going straight forward, a little bit more straight forward or fully extended forward. I don't know. You don't have to be straight. Squeeze your abdominals, find your power, and then see if you can float back to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. You're doing fantastic. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, take your left knee, sorry, take it to your left elbow. That would be your right knee. Yes, inhale, stretch your right leg long. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, stretch your right leg long. Exhale, step into it all the way to your thumb and rise up crescent lunge. With your exhale, bring your hands to heart center, twist your right, drop down. And then we're gonna bend our back knee just so it's hovering over the yoga mat, release your prayer hands. And as a training wheel, you bring your right elbow into your right hip. Now, if you've been doing this for a long time, Sabine, of course you don't need your right elbow and your right hip. And then you're gonna bend your arms and catch yourself and maybe stretch your legs out to scissors. Very nice. And then see if you have enough energy to come back. Place your feet back down. Yes, very nice. Inhale, Anjaniyasana. And then with your exhale, fly forward into airplane. Bring your hands to heart center. And with your next exhale, bow forward. We're gonna come into standing splits here. So it's a weird resting pose. <laughs> But notice that you can actually rest a little bit in this forward bend. You're stretching your left foot up to the ceiling. Nice squared hips, Stephanie. Allow yourself to be kind, even in the privacy of your inner landscape. Now, I want you to reach back with your right hand and grab on, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have you reach back with your left hand today. Um, yeah, I got mixed up. So reach back with your, <laughs> with your left hand. Uh -huh. It should feel a lot more spacious. And then maybe see if you can lift all the way up to standing, holding on to your left leg. <laughs> and then kick your foot into your hands. Let your heart be open. Let your leg be active. And then you're just gonna come back to your forward bend. Release your leg, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, one-legged chaparanga. Woohoo! Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, stretch your beautiful left leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bend your knee and tap your right elbow. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Exhale, bend your left knee and tap your left elbow. Inhale, stretch your left leg long. Step your foot forward, rise up. 
crescent lunge. And then with your exhale, bring your hands to heart center, twist towards your left, drop your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. And then you're gonna start to bend your right knee. Bring your left elbow to your waist as a, as a training wheel or just have your, arm, your left elbow out. Then bend your elbows and you're, you're coming to like balance on your arm rest. Keep your head lifting, especially careful of that brick over there. And, ooh, and then come back, <laughs> well done. Negotiating the space, nobody got a black eye. And then inhale, lift up, Anjaniasana and fly into your airplane. Breathe through your nose if you can. With your next exhale, bring your hands into prayer and bow forward. Ikapada Uttanasana. So one hand at a time to your ankle, one foot on the ceiling, one foot on the floor. Um, and notice that you actually, if you put in yourself this desire to touch the ceiling with your right leg, it actually empowers your whole pose. Beautiful. And then reach back with your right hand. So we often go from the inside of our foot for, for standing dancer, but whichever grip you get, inhale, lift up, and then enjoy the one-legged back bend. So your gaze is lifting. Yep, wear the plant like a hairdo. <laughs> Let your heart be lifting. Lift your eyes. I want to see your glorious glitter in your eyes. Very nice. Bring your foot back more to center pair. Yes, for five, four, three, two, one. And then bow forward, releasing your leg. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, one legged chaturanga. You can do it. Don't overthink it. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And then take a full inhale. And with your exhale, empty your breath all the way and float your feet through your hands coming onto your butt. I always need sound effects there. I don't know what it is. And I often need a little dance. So dance yourself down towards the ground. Maybe there's a high desire for joy. And we're coming into um, the last little push of our fiery practice this morning. Um, so this is what, when it really gets interesting, huh? So put your feet on the ground. You want your feet hip distance apart and that's often more narrow than you think. And then you turn your toes in a little bit more even still. And then with your inhale, roll your hips up to the sky and with your exhale, roll all the way back down. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a little warmy thing here. If you're not warm enough, inhale, roll your hips up. Exhale, roll all the way down. Unamas. Inhale, roll your hips all the way up. Exhale, roll your hips down. Now inhale, roll your hips up and keep them up. So you wanna feel that your ankles are directly below your knees. And a good check for this is when you push down in your heels, do you feel like your knees get stronger and more lifted? You wanna tap into these opposite forces in your body. So you're reaching your knees away from your face and you're letting your chest come back towards your face. You want to imagine that you're squeezing a block and one of these days I'll get some cork blocks because we have like these birch blocks and they're really heavy. But imaginary blocks work just fine. And then release your hands and slowly roll down with your hips, let your feet slide out so that your feet are hip distance, a mat distance apart and your knees are falling together. Just pause for a moment here. And again, check in. You know, for me, this is often the part of the class where I'm like, yes, give me a whole more hour. I got this. But we all are different here. So notice where your desires are. 
what's which you know which one's calling you louder comfort or enlightenment and then bring your feet back and we're going to do another bridge variation so even for those of us with bendy spines we want to do this bridge variation you're going to bring your right foot to the top of your left knee and then inhale lift up your hips Mm -hmm. So you want to keep your hips the same height. You want to feel, so this is a little bit like pigeon combined with the back bend here. You want to feel that your right knee is dropping, but your left, your right hip is efforting up. You can either interlace your fingers underneath you, or you can help yourself by actually lifting your booty, bringing your hands to your sacrum. Notice if, you're, if your right hip doesn't want to let go, see what, you, what helps you. Notice if you can lift up a little bit more. Feel your chest opening up to your face a little bit more. Your hands pushing down on the yoga mat. Mm -hmm. And then slowly roll your hips down and switch your legs. So again, this is an active hip opener. We, we just did an active hip opener in Warrior Two. Inhale, lift up your hips. So really the bony part of your left ankle is to the outside of your right knee. Inhale, lift up. Now notice how much it matters more how the alignment of your leg is. Your whole leg is working here. You wanna feel the heaviness in your left knee so it drops down and then opens up your left hip flexor. You can support your sacrum or you can have your hands interlaced the opposite way from last time, of course, <laughs> on the ground. And you might notice like, oh, I like doing this on one side better than the other side. And then with your next exhale, roll down. Allow your feet to both come to the ground. Let your feet slide out and your knees drop together. So a lot of times with my yoga practice, I feel like it is the, the true essence of the word um, educate, where the, the roots, the etymology of the word to educate actually means to, to reveal or to take the veils away. So when I am in this part of my practice, I feel like you know, I moved to that first 10 minutes of resistance, and then I moved for another layer of resistance or you know, maybe um, stagnation by getting the fire to move through my whole body. And now I feel like I'm being unveiled more to be truly myself. But even more so if we do one more back bend. All right, slide your feet in. And you should feel liberated to have both your legs active here. Yogi's choice, bridge or wheel. This is really our last efforting pose. Yes, you can do handstand to wheel. You can hold on to your ankles if you want, Stephanie, or you can practice standing up. Do you want to assist? Oh, you barely needed me. <laughs> Just in there. It's like emotional support more than anything. Beautiful. Allow yourself to be friendly with your edges. Maybe slide your heels and feet a little bit closer pair. Now come to your edge for five, four, three, two, kiss your heels <laughs> and none and lower all the way down to the ground. One last time, let your knees fall together. Let your feet slide out. Take one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. And we're gonna do Supta Gamukhasana. So you're gonna bring your right knee over your left knee. 
um, your hand is still in your belly, your other hand on your heart, and you want to lift your knees up over your hips and then lift up your feet so they're lined up with your knees. And now first you're going to try to effort your feet towards your face. They're not going to move very much, but just feel that effort. You should be efforting so much, like maybe you're nearly shaking. And then take your hands to your shins or your flexed feet and pull your shins or your feet towards your face without lowering your feet. Yeah, you guys are perfect here. You wanna feel the kind of relaxation of your lower back and the stretching of your gluteus maximus or to be maximi, cause there's two of them. Well, technically there's 10 of them, but you're just in charge of two. Beautiful. And then release your hands and let your legs stay twisted. Slide your cheeks to your right and drop your knees to your left. Take a full breath in and with your exhale, just sigh out. Ah. <sighs> So we want to start to notice that when we do something like a challenging vinyasa, a sweaty yoga practice, a good run, or a, a, a long meditation, or any of these other kind of practices that require effort and allow us to meet our edge, it's nearly like it simplifies our own communication and language with ourselves. empowers our kind of, I want to say loftier, but that sounds disconnected, our truer desires, not just the desire to stay safe and be comfortable and soft and fragile. And then inhale, bring your knees back to center, unwind your legs, and then rewind your legs, bringing your left knee over your right knee, you know, theoretically having one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, then you lift up your knees, they're over your hips, and you lift up your feet, so they're lined up with your knees. And before you're using your arms, you're just efforting with your legs. And so this effort, you should feel it, but it, you might not see it so much. So maybe you see it once your legs start to shake, but I know you can feel it. And then take your hands and slide your hands from your shins, maybe to your feet. See if you can flex your feet a little bit more, Pascal. Yeah, exactly. So that activates the posture a little bit and actually protects your joints. Pulling your feet towards your face, feeling the expansion of your lower back little effort in the glute muscles. And then release your grip and slide your buttocks towards the left and drop your knees to the right. Now this poem basically says, it says the same thing in different words is by Hafiz, you know, hundreds of years before the other poem. The lute will beg. You need, you need to become a pen in the sun's hand. We need for the earth to sing through our pores and eyes. The body will again become restless until your soul paints all its beauty upon the sky. Don't tell me, dear ones, that what Hafiz says is not true. For when the heart tastes its glorious destiny, you awake to our constant need for your love. And God's lute will beg 
for your hands. And then come rolling back to center, hug your knees in, and then lift up your face to kiss your knees. Thank you for being so awesome and doing such a good job. And you're going to rock back and forth a little bit on your yoga mat to come up to a seated position. We're going to finish with um, a cobbler. <laughs> Sounds like, okay, now there's dessert. <laughs> and it is a little bit. But we're doing, we often do this, it'd be yin butterfly, but we're not doing this yin style. We're doing an active yang style. So you bring your heels as close to your groin as they, as they go. And the outside of the edge of your feet are pushing together. I don't know if you can see on the screen, but my, you can see the bottom of my feet. My feet are actually efforting open. And the pushing of the outside of my feet help my knees go up more to the sides and open up my hips more. You're going to grab onto your feet so your thumbs are in the arches of your feet, like you're opening up your feet like a book. And then you're gonna lift up and then you're gonna come forward. So you're coming forward, this variation, we're coming forward with a long spine, eventually actually putting our head in front of our feet. So you reach long and then you relax into the pose a little bit more. So your feet are still active. You're pushing the outside edge of your feet towards one another. Your elbows might even help push your knees down and you're bringing your forehead down to the ground. Then inhale, roll up, and we're gonna, I said this was the finishing thing, but we're just gonna line it before Shavasana. So bring your feet onto the ground, place your fingers on the mat behind you. We're just going for one glorious lion roar. Squeeze your butt, drop your head back, stick out your tongue, look at your third eye, and with a whisper, roar. <sighs> and then bring your hips back down, wipe off your chin unless you have a lot of hair there, and lower yourself down to the yoga mat for Shavasana. So if your lower back is sensitive, feel free to have your knees bent and your feet as wide as the yoga mat and your knees um, falling back together. Do you want a blanket? Do you want a blanket stuff? And just take it, yeah, just take a couple of moments to get good and proper there. You can even have your knees bent, lift up your hips and roll out your lower back to the ground. You can lift up your chest, pinch your shoulder blades together, drag your shoulder blades down your spine and then drop your ribs back down to relax your shoulders.
With your next inhale, invite your sweet breath to the edges of your body. We start to invite some movement from the peripheries in. Your fingertips, your toe tips. It's like tuning your spiritual antennas. And then inhale, stretch your arms over your head, reach your feet away from your hands. Get your whole glorious body long. And then with your exhale, hug your knees into your chest. And if it's comfortable for you, curl onto your side. Or you can already rock yourself into a seated position where we'll all meet up. And find your way to a seat and we can um, take our Anahata Mudra again. Maybe a little bit more poignant, this idea that an open heart takes a little bit of effort. It doesn't just happen. So feel your thumbs connect to your breastbone. Feel the base of your palms touching, your fingers reaching out. It's like gentle effort, one could say. With your eyes closed, just picture the people you're here together with in the moment, if not in the room. And let's close with one ohm. Empty your breath first. Take a deep inhale. Bring your prayer hands to your third eye. Invite the divine light. And as we bow forward together, we say namaste. And so much love to you all. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.